Are you ready to explore a lesser known side of Buddha? A side that challenges the common perception of him as a figure of boundless compassion and forgiveness. In this video, we delve into the insights of the time when Buddha would not forgive, shedding light on Buddhist teachings and offering a fresh perspective on the path to enlightenment. Lesson 1. Killing. The act of killing, or taking a life, goes against everything that Buddhism teaches. Buddha's first rule says that you should not kill anyone or anything. The sacredness of life is the most important thing, and everyone on the spiritual road needs to understand this. The Buddha taught that all living things have Buddha nature, which is the capacity to become enlightened. Taking a life ends this possibility, which hurts both the victim and the person who did it in immeasurable ways. Killing creates very bad karma that keeps a person stuck in the circle of birth and death, samsara, and blocks their way to freedom. Think about someone who kills out of hate, anger, or even hunger. This action causes a lot of pain to spread. When someone kills, they build up bad karma that will finally show up as pain. The victim goes through a lot of pain and often comes back to life in worse circumstances because of how violently they died. This never-ending circle of violence and revenge causes a lot of pain. Because he knew how sacred life is and how bad the karmic consequences are for killing, the Buddha wouldn't spare people who kill. Buddha wanted his followers to have a deep respect for life by showing them how serious this act was. He also wanted them to develop compassion and nonviolence in their hearts. To really understand how the Buddha felt about killing, one has to look into the idea of karma and how it works. According to karma, the rule of cause and effect, everything you do has an effect on other things. Good things happen when you do good things, and bad things happen when you do bad things. Killing is one of the worst things that can be done, and it causes a lot of bad karma that causes a lot of pain in future lives. Killing upsets the balance of life in the world, Every living thing has a certain job to do in the complex web of life. Taking a life too soon throws this balance off, causing pain and discord for both the person and the group as a whole. The lessons in this book are still very important today. There are many wars, fights, and violent events in the world. Teachings of the Buddha about nonviolence and the value of life offer a way to achieve peace and unity. People can help make the world a more caring and peaceful place by realizing the terrible effects of killing and committing to the principle of nonviolence. People can develop a deeper respect for life and help make the world a better place to live by learning and accepting this lesson. Lesson 2. Stealing Another major offense in the beliefs of Buddhism is theft, which means taking something that is not yours. In Buddhism, the second rule is to not take what is not given. This theory applies to more than just things you can touch. It also applies to ideas, chances, and even time. The desire to steal and the lack of knowledge that leads to it hurt both the target and the person who steals. The Buddha said that people steal because they don't understand how everything is linked. When someone takes, they don't think about how their actions affect other people or the karmic effects that follow. The act of stealing creates bad karma that blocks the way to enlightenment and causes more suffering in the future. Think about someone who steals because they are greedy or need money badly. This action causes a chain reaction of pain. The victim loses something and goes through pain, while the person who hurt them gets bad karma. Getting stuck in this loop of taking and suffering keeps people unhappy and keeps them from finding true happiness. The Buddha would not forgive stealing because he knew very well that all beings are linked and that stealing has strong karmic consequences. By showing people how bad this action was, the Buddha wanted to teach them to deeply value other people's property and to encourage them to be kind and happy inside. To really understand how the Buddha felt about stealing, you need to look into the idea of right livelihood. In Buddhism, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths parts is right livelihood which means doing a good job at your job. People think that stealing or lying to make a living is bad and that it creates bad karma. By following right livelihood, 
people can develop moral behavior and help make society more fair and peaceful. The act of taking throws off society's natural balance of trust and peace. Everyone has the right to their own things and chances. Taking what isn't given throws this balance off, causing pain and distress for both the person and the group as a whole. The lessons in this book are still very important today. There are big differences in wealth, crime, and theft in the world. The Buddha taught about moral behavior and the right way to make a living. These lessons can help make society more fair and just. People can help make the world a better place by learning the terrible effects of stealing and practicing the virtue of generosity. People can learn to respect other people's things more and help make the world a more fair and peaceful place by learning and accepting this lesson. Lesson 3. Sexual Misconduct Another major offense in the teachings of Buddhism is sexual misconduct, which means acting sexually in a way that is wrong or damaging. The third Buddhist rule is to not do anything sexually wrong. In sexual relationships, this concept stresses how important it is to show respect, get permission, and act in an honest way. Buddha taught that sexual misbehavior comes from wanting something and not knowing what to do with it. It hurts both the victim and the person who does it. Sexual misconduct creates bad karma that blocks the way to enlightenment and causes more suffering in the future. Think about someone who does sexually inappropriate things out of love or power. This action causes a chain reaction of pain. The victim goes through stress and pain, and the person who hurts them gets bad karma. Unfortunately, this circle of harm and suffering keeps people unhappy and keeps them from finding true happiness. We find stories that show what happens when people are sexually inappropriate. One of these stories is about a monk who, out of desire, did sexual things that were not proper. Even though the monk did something wrong, he was finally forgiven and given a chance to make things right. But it is clear from the Buddha's lessons that sexual misconduct is never okay in and of itself. The story shows that even though people can accept, the karmic effects of sexual misconduct still need to be dealt with. The Buddha would not forgive sexual misconduct because he knew very well how important respect and consent are in sexual relationships and how bad the karma consequences are when they are broken. By showing people how bad this action was, the Buddha wanted to make them deeply value others and want to develop morality and mindfulness in their hearts. If you want to know what the Buddha thought about sexual misbehavior, you need to look into the idea of right action. In Buddhism, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths parts is right behavior, which means acting in an ethical way. Performing sexually inappropriate acts is seen as immoral and brings about bad luck. People can develop moral behavior and help make society more respected and peaceful by doing the right thing. Sexual misconduct throws off the natural balance of trust and respect between people in a relationship. Every living thing has the right to their own body and to be free. Sexual misconduct throws this balance off, hurting and confusing not only the person, but also the group as a whole. The lessons in this book are still very important today. There is a lot of sexual abuse, harassment, and exploitation in the world. The Buddha taught morality and respect in sexual relationships. These lessons can help make society more fair and respectful. By knowing the serious effects of sexual misconduct and upholding the principle of respect, everyone can help make the world a better place for everyone. Lesson 4. Lying One more major offense against Buddhist beliefs is lying which is the act of purposely misleading others. Buddhism's fourth rule says that you should not lie. This theory stresses how important it is to be truthful and honest when you talk to other people. Buddha taught that people lie out of want and stupidity, and that lying hurts both the person who lies and the person who does it. Lying creates bad karma that keeps you from learning and causes you to suffer in the future. See someone who lies because they are afraid or want something. This action causes a chain reaction of pain. The victim feels betrayed and suffers, while the person who hurts them gets bad karma. Through lies and pain, 
This circle of unhappiness keeps going and keeps people from finding true happiness. We find stories that show what happens when you lie. One story is about a monk who lied about what he did out of fear. Even though the monk lied, he was finally forgiven and given a chance to make things right. His lessons, on the other hand, make it clear that lying itself is never okay. This story shows that even though you can forgive, you still have to deal with the karma effects of lying. The Buddha wouldn't forgive lying because he knew how important it was to be truthful and honest in conversation and how bad the karmic consequences would be if someone lied. By showing how bad this action was, the Buddha wanted to make people deeply value the truth and encourage them to be honest and mindful in their hearts. To really understand how the Buddha felt about lying, you need to look into the idea of right speech. In Buddhism, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths parts is right speech, which means communicating in an honest way. Lying or tricking people with your words is considered bad and creates bad karma. People can develop moral behavior and help make society more honest and peaceful by practicing right speech. More than that, lying throws off the natural balance of trust and honesty in partnerships. Everyone has the right to know the truth. Tricking other people upsets this balance, which is bad for everyone, not just the person performing the trick. The Buddha's lessons on being truthful and honest can help make society more truthful and fair. People can help make the world a better place by learning about the terrible effects of lying and accepting the value of being honest. Lesson 5. Avarice and Greed According to Buddhist beliefs, avarice and greed, or wanting things and money too much, are major sins. In Buddhism, the fifth precept says not to use drugs that make you feel high or confused. This also means not giving in to any kind of strong attachment or desire that causes pain. This theory stresses how important it is to be happy and detached in your life. The Buddha said that greed and avarice come from wanting things and not knowing enough about them. They hurt both the person and society. Hatred and greed create bad karma, which makes people suffer in the future and blocks their way to truth. Think about someone who gets rich because they are greedy or want power. This action causes a chain reaction of pain. The person gets stuck in a circle of constant wanting and is never happy with what they have, while others may suffer from the effects of their too much stuff. People will never be truly happy because they are stuck in this loop of wanting something and suffering it. We find stories that show what happens when people are selfish and greedy. One of these stories is about a rich trader who, because he was greedy, took advantage of his workers and made a lot of money. Even though the merchant did bad things out of greed, he had to deal with the results and suffered a lot. The story shows that even though you can forgive, you still have to deal with the karma effects of being selfish and greedy. The Buddha wouldn't forgive acts of avarice and greed because he knew how important it was to be happy and detached in life and how bad the karmic effects would be if someone wasn't. The Buddha wanted to teach people the seriousness of this action so that they would have a deep respect for simplicity and want to grow happiness and awareness in their hearts. To really understand how the Buddha felt about greed and avarice, one needs to look into the idea of right intention. In Buddhism, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths parts is right intention, which means having moral goals and motivations. People think that intentions based on selfishness or greed are bad and create bad karma. People can develop moral behavior and help make society more peaceful and content by having right intention. In addition, selfishness and greed throw off society's natural balance of happiness and kindness. Everyone has the right to an equal amount of tools and chances. This balance is upset when there is too much buildup, which hurts and suffers everyone. There is a lot of value in this lesson. There are big differences in income, too much shopping, and too much materialism in the world. The Buddha's lessons on being happy and not caring about things other people have can help make society more fair and just. Individuals can help make the world a better place by realizing the terrible effects of greed and avarice and committing to the principle of happiness. Lesson 6. False Views 
Following false views or ideas that are wrong or harmful is one of the most important sins in Buddhist teachings. In Buddhism, the sixth precept says that you should not accept false beliefs. This theory stresses how important it is to be wise and understand things in life. He taught that people have false beliefs because they are ignorant or deluded, and these beliefs hurt both the person and society. Holding false beliefs creates bad karma that causes more pain and blocks the way to enlightenment. Think about someone who believes hurtful or false things because they are ignorant or deluded. This action causes a chain reaction of pain. The person gets stuck in a cycle of delusion and can't see the truth, while other people may have to deal with the effects of their harmful views. It is impossible for people to find true happiness because they are stuck in a cycle of ignorance and pain. We find stories that show what happens when people have wrong ideas. One of these stories is about a teacher who taught his students damaging ideas because he didn't know any better. Despite acting without knowing what was going on, the teacher finally had to deal with the results of his actions and suffered a great deal. While it is possible to forgive, the story shows that wrong beliefs still have karmic effects that must be dealt with. Because he knew how important knowledge and understanding are in life and the terrible karmic consequences that come with them, the Buddha wouldn't forgive acts that were based on false beliefs. By showing people how serious this act was, the Buddha wanted to make them deeply respect the truth and encourage them to grow in wisdom and mindfulness. If you want to know what the Buddha thought about false views, you need to look into the idea of right understanding. In Buddhism, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths parts is right understanding, which means having moral views and perceptions. An understanding that includes false beliefs is seen as unhealthy and causes bad karma. People can develop moral behavior and help make society smarter and more peaceful by practicing right understanding. It also throws off the natural balance of knowledge and understanding in society when people hold false beliefs. Everyone has the right to know the truth and see things as they really are. This balance is upset by holding on to false beliefs which hurts and causes suffering not only for the person, but for everyone. There is a lot of false information, ignorance, and damaging ideas in the world. The Buddha's lessons on understanding and wisdom can help make society more honest and fair. By realizing the terrible effects of false beliefs and following the principle of knowledge, everyone can help make the world a better place for everyone. In Buddhism, the lesson of false views is a deep lesson on how important it is to be wise and understand things in life and the terrible karmic effects that come after. The fact that the Buddha wouldn't forgive acts of false views shows how serious this was and is a harsh warning of how important it is to be wise and behave morally. People can learn to respect the truth more and help make the world a wiser and more peaceful place by learning and accepting this lesson.